And the smart cart is a, is a really phenomenal device in its ability. Many of you have it. If you don't have it, you certainly want to get it as it measures acceleration, velocity, and force. But we've actually taken the smart cart and we've taken it a step further. We've built in the opportunity now for you to use a device that makes the smart cart motorized. And with that, you can do a whole bunch of experiments, all of which are measurable, all of the great things with the smart cart now enhanced with the motor. And the really neat thing about the motor, I think Dan was showing the, uh, the Blockly coding before, it can all be coded so that you can now program this device to carry out your wishes as you start measuring some interesting things in physics. So what are we going to measure now, Dan? You've got a very interesting setup. So we have what, a, what are you going to yeah, do here? We have a lot of things going on here. I have a smart cart, and I have our rod stand adapter that allows you to mount different sensors to the smart cart. And I've mounted two of our wireless motion sensors. This is definitely something that was difficult, if not uh, impossible, to do with the old wired ones. And I have one pointing at this background and another one pointing at this one. And the smart cart motor is going to make this easier. It's going to drive the smart cart down the track at a co fairly constant speed. And the motion sensors are going to measure the velocity of the cart relative to, well, let's call this the x-axis and this the y-axis. So they're going to measure the components of the velocity. And so this is in our experiment library. It is a, a lab written for the smart cart motor. And what's and it called? Students, uh, components of Velocity. Components of Velocity, wow, all right. And students, if it just search smart cart motor and you'll get all the labs associated with it. I think it was probably one of the uh, funner things I've done here at PASCO is, is writing the labs for the smart cart motor. And so it will, um, students can discover the relationship between those two velocities for themselves rather than just being told. And so this usually is a, even for students that have had trig, it's usually a tough idea early in their physics class. They're like, hey, learn sines and cosines. Now you're telling me I have to do something with them? Right. Here's a great and, application of it as we break them into the two different components. Right. So uh, now you don't really, the lab that's written doesn't have both of them. They can measure the X and the Y separately and do the lab, but, you know, go big or go home, right? right. We've got plenty of motion sensors here, so we put both of them on there. And I've also found if you tip the track down a little bit so that gravity cancels out friction and air resistance, you don't really need the motor, but... Let's not tell our customers that. Right. Yes, uh, you need no, the, the motor. The motor makes it easier. Right. It definitely does. Yes. There's so many other things you can do with the motor. You're going to want one. So I have a... Oh, is it doing that again? So I have a capstone display. Possibly. And I have... The top screen is the velocity of the cart. The bottom screen will show the X and the Y components... No one's saying, let's try this again. That didn't seem to do anything, we'll see. Um, and so the bottom screen is going to show the X and Y components. And the thing is a little tricky is the motion sensor that's pointing at the X axis is measuring the motion of the cart relative to the Y and vice versa. And so that's actually a good reason to do them separately. And so I have the track at about a 20 degree angle to the uh, X axis. So we should expect the Y component to be greater than uh, the X component to be greater than the Y component. Let's see, I think I might have switched them when I hooked them up. Oops, I hit, I hit it twice. I have a stop condition in there and I keep forgetting that. Uh, So I hit stop, and it's really starting again. Let's do that again. And let's... So these backgrounds aren't working as well as walls. I had it working better than that a little bit ago. But I also put the um, magnitude taking the X and Y components, squaring them, adding them, taking the square root, and graphing that at the top as well. Oh, it's going wacky on us again. 
I saw it for a little bit though. Uh, so that's just, that's not a problem with our uh, software. That's my uh, output to the HDMI cable for some reason is, there we go. Let's do that one more time. See if I can get a little better data. But that one is rock solid. They're usually both like that, but still not too bad. So students can take those X and Y components and look at the relationships between them and the velocity of the smart cart. They can do their own calculations. For measuring the angle, I found you could just print out a uh, protractor on a piece of paper and real large, that makes it real easy, but it's not a protractor then, it's, it's just an amateur tractor. So. <laughs> Somebody laughs. Uh, so that, this probably took me more to set up than anything else, JP, but I'm done already. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a very quick demonstration. But Dan, you're not really done because I want to ask you, you said that you enjoyed writing some of the labs for that smart cart motor. What else is available? What, what great things did you put in the well, library for our folks Another one with the motion sensor is you can measure the velocity of the cart relative to another cart. So that one's pretty good. Um, you can uh, very precisely drag a friction block and see does friction de does the force of friction depend on the speed of the block mm -hmm. and students are usually taught no that just, it doesn't matter and in this case they can find out for themselves is, is the textbook oversimplifying uh, I won't give away the answer that's that's a student investigation great um, and so I, there's like six on there. Awesome. Well, these are all available. Dan has written some great labs. He, he writes a, a tremendous number of labs in our physics library, pasco.com. Just uh, take a look at our libraries. You'll find our uh, lab, our activities library, uh, as, long, as well as our video library, where Dan explains a lot of these complicated concepts and many of the videos that you'll find there. So check it out and take a look. And thank you, Dan Burns, for breaking things up and, and resolving components.